This is a quick video to show you how the AC generator works. Now there's many videos out there on YouTube about the AC generator, but some of the animations can be a little bit confusing. So I'm just giving you a slightly different take on it using a model which I've made from plastic knives and forks and uh, some cardboard tube. This part represents uh, the slip ring. Now what a slip ring does is it allows a wire to move all the way inside without a fixed physical connection. So it can move around without getting tangled up. This part represents my coil of wire. So you have to imagine there's a coil of wire coiled all the way around, all up here, all through there, all the way down there, back into there. And by the time it hits here, these are the contacts for the slip ring. So the way it attaches is, can you see now the important bit is you got unequal lengths. This bit is short, that bit is quite long, okay? And this comes in handy because it fits into here, like so. I've color coded it, so the short fork is the short wire, and that's connected to the first slip ring, and the long one is connected to the bottom slip ring. Now this is very important because current can only go through the top slip ring through the short wire and through the bottom slip ring through the longer wire. And you'll see why that's important in a second. Now, what you need to generate electricity is a magnetic field. So I'm going to put south here and I'm going to put north here. Okay. And remember, the magnetic field always goes from, from north to south. And at the bottom end, connected to this, I'm going to have some wire. So one wire connected to the top one, one wire connected to the bottom slip ring. I'm going to put a resistor here so I don't fry the circuit. And imagine there's, um, where this dot is, there's a galvanometer. Now what I am not going to do right now is going to show you the direction of the galvanometer because for that you need this part. Now. For this, you need to use your right hand rule, Fleming's right hand rule. Now, what do the various bits mean? Okay, first of all, we've got the thumb, thumb movement, okay? First finger is field, and second finger is current, okay? So you've got this three-dimensional perpendicular arrangement. Thumb for movement, first finger field, second finger is the current, okay? Now ignore these arrows because I did a, a different demonstration earlier. I'm just using the same model. Okay. Now importantly here, we provide the movement and the magnetic field. And movement of a wire inside of a magnetic field gives you current. So let's have a look at what's going on. Um, firstly, the movement. I'm going to turn it so that it's going around this way. I'll get this out of the way for now. So it's turning around like this. Okay. Put my slip ring back. And in this instance, you can say that this is going up and this part of the coil is going down. So you've got a turning motion like that. Okay. So let's have a look with our right hand rule. Firstly, the movement. This part, remember, is going up. The magnetic field is going this way. And you can see the current is going to make, uh, it's going to make, it's going to go up here. So movement, field, north to south, current is up. Okay. And on this side, remember, I'm moving it this way. This part of the wire is going downwards. So now, Movement is down, field is still in that direction, and the current, second finger, is pointing down, okay? So we've got a situation where the current is going all the way across down here into this white fork here, which is our wire, okay? Now, concentrate on this bit. The current is going down into the white fork. The white fork is only connected to the bottom slip ring. So the current is going to go into here, up here, and back into the black wire up there. 
And as it does so, it goes around, a galvanometer would move like this. I hope that's clear. Now remember, we're still providing a movement and we're going to end up like this at the next half revolution. Okay, like this. Now, same story. This side is going up, this side is going down. I'm spinning the thing like this. Okay. Importantly, the orientation is just reversed. That's the only difference. So, let's have a look. Movement is going up. Magnetic field is this way. Current is going upwards here. And again, this side is going down, so movement is going down. Magnetic field is that way. And if I can orientate myself, you can see my finger is pointing downwards there. So again, you've got this current flowing in this kind of a loop. Importantly, the, the current is always going to flow in that loop. It just differs whether it goes down the, the short wire or the long wire. In this case, it's going down the short wire. And the short wire, represented by the black fork, is connected to the top slip ring. So it's going to go down here, down here, up into this bottom slip ring, and then it's going to go up the white wire, or the longer wire. You see? So now, if it goes down here, the current can only go down here, and the galvanometer is going to be moving the other way. So as you go like this, it now goes this way. Like this, it goes this way, downwards. Okay? And then, like this, it goes the other way again. This is why it's called alternating current, because the current is always changing direction. And if you're going to summarize it, you can summarize it like this. You can say movement of a wire plus magnetic field gives you current. Okay? Movement of a wire plus magnetic field gives you current. That's it. Thank you for watching. Bye.